episode 19, Spooky Stories. Welcome to Kid Pack. I'm Sarah. And I'm Jack. Today's episode is a little different from our normal episode. That's right. Today's episode is going to be a wild ride. You're in for a treat because we've got some spine-tingling stories to share with all you. We want to thank all of our listeners for sending in these amazing tales. So grab a cozy blanket, a stuffed animal to squeeze, and gather around pack members. We have some spooky stories to tell. (laughs) This first story was sent in from Alexander in Utah. The Ominous House, A Haunted Tale. Once upon a time, a family moved into a new house in a quiet neighborhood. It was an old house with a lot of character, but there was something ominous about it. The family tried to shake the feeling, but strange things started happening. The first night, they heard phantom footsteps walking down the hallway. They thought it was just a creaky old house settling, but they couldn't shake off the eerie feeling. The next night, the family woke up to find their furniture had been rearranged. Not only that, but their family portraits on the walls were all switched with photos of a different family. As the days passed, the family started noticing more odd occurrences. Doors and windows would open and close on their own. Whispering voices would speak when no one was around, and objects would move across the floor. The family searched for answers, but they could never find out why the house was haunted. They only knew that something strange and sinister was lurking within its walls. One night, the family heard a commotion coming from the basement. They cautiously made their way down the steps and saw a shadowy figure standing in the corner. Suddenly, the figure turned and started rushing towards them, causing them to panic and flee. The family moved out immediately, never looking back at the haunted house. They found out later that the house had a dark history and that several families had moved in and out over the years, afraid to stay due to unexplained happenings. To this day, the house remains empty and people avoid going near it. Only a few brave souls have ventured inside, never to be seen again. (laughs) This story was sent in from McKenna in Washington. The Haunted Mansion. It was Halloween night, and a group of friends decided to go on an adventure. They all gathered at the entrance of the old abandoned mansion on the edge of town. Rumor had it that the mansion was haunted, but they didn't believe it. As they walked through the dark, creaking hallways, strange noises echoed around them. The old portraits on the walls seemed to be watching them their eyes following them everywhere they went. Suddenly, the group heard a blood-curdling scream. They rushed towards the source of the scream, but found nothing. That's when they remembered the rumors of the mansion's haunted nature. The group tried to leave, but the doors and windows were all locked. Trapped inside, they decided to explore the mansion to find a way out. As they walked through the dusty rooms, they saw ghostly apparitions, heard eerie whispers, and felt cold breath on their necks. As they reached the end of the hallway, they saw a figure in the shadows. The figure slowly turned its head, revealing a ghostly face. The group started running in all directions, trying to find an escape, but the ghostly figure seemed to follow them, gaining on them with every step. Eventually, they stumbled upon a hidden doorway that led to a secret room. In the room, they discovered a dusty old chest. As they opened the chest, they found a journal that described the mansion's dark history. The mansion was once owned by a wealthy family who collected rare and mysterious artifacts. One day, they brought home a cursed object. The curse spread slowly to each family member, one by one. And in the end, the only occupant of the mansion 
was the cursed object itself waiting for new victims to claim. The group realized that they had set free the cursed object and that now they were its new prey. They managed to reverse the curse and destroy the object, freeing themselves from the haunted mansion and saving their lives. From that day on, the mansion stood empty and no one dared to enter or disturb its cursed secrets. <laughs> this next story was sent in from Isabella in New Jersey. And it's called The Midnight Pack. It was a moonlit Halloween night, and the village of Grimworth was preparing for the annual harvest festival. Children were dressed in spooky costumes, and adults were decorating the village square with pumpkins and scarecrows. The village was abuzz with excitement until a sinister howl echoed across the village. The villagers ran in horror to their homes, but the howl seemed to be getting closer. Suddenly, a pack of werewolves emerged from the shadows. They were tall, muscular, and their eyes glowed like yellow orbs. The werewolves attacked the village and destroyed everything in their path. The villagers tried to fight back, but their weapons were of no use against the powerful werewolves. The villagers were outnumbered and their fate looked bleak. As the werewolves continued their rampage, a brave young girl named Abigail emerged from the shadows. She was determined to take on the werewolves and save her village. She had heard about a powerful spell that could turn the werewolves back into humans, but she needed a magical flower to make it work. Abigail set out to find the magical flower deep in the forest of Enspire. As she reached the heart of the forest, she finally found the flower. She picked it and made her way back to the village. As she entered the village, the werewolves surrounded her. But Abigail held up the flower and recited the spell. A bright light enveloped the werewolves, and one by one, they transformed back into their human form. The villagers cheered as the werewolves apologized for their attack and made amends for the damage they had done. The Harvard Festival continued, and the village of Grimworth was saved. From that day on, the werewolves of Grimworth were welcomed into the village with open arms, and Abigail was hailed as a hero. The end. <laughs> this next tale was sent in from Sophie in Maryland, and it's called The Witching Hour. Twas the night before Halloween, and the woods were shrouded in darkness. The villagers of Blackwood have always been wary of the woods, for they knew it was the home of the witches. Legend had it that the witches gathered each year on Halloween night to cast spells and brew potions. One of the most powerful witches was Trudy, known for her love of pumpkins. She had a garden filled with the brightest and roundest pumpkins in all the land. But her love affair with pumpkins was about to take a dark turn. As the witching hour approached, Trudy gathered her fellow witches and led them to the garden. They began to chant, and with each verse, the pumpkins began to glow. The witches danced around the garden, their cackles filling the night air. Suddenly, a bolt of lightning struck the largest pumpkin, sending a shockwave through the garden. Trudy saw her chance and reached out to touch the pumpkin. As her fingers touched the pumpkin, a surge of energy flowed through her body, giving her immense power. Trudy used her newfound power to cast a spell on the village, causing pumpkins to come to life and terrorize the villagers. The villagers were helpless against the cursed pumpkins, and chaos ensued in the village. Amidst the chaos, a young boy named Jonathan emerged, determined to put a stop to the witch's spell. Armed with a slingshot and a handful of silver pellets, Jonathan set out to defeat the cursed pumpkin. As he approached the witch's garden, Trudy stepped forward, ready to strike, but Jonathan had a trick up his sleeve. He aimed his slingshot at Trudy's pumpkin, pulling it back tightly until he let it fly. The silver pellet struck the pumpkin, shattering it into a million pieces. As the pumpkin disintegrated, Trudy's power faded away and the curse was lifted. The pumpkins returned to their normal state and the villagers celebrated their victory over the witches. 
From that day on, the villagers of Blackwood honored Jonathan as a hero and always made sure to keep a close eye on the witch's garden. The end. <laughs> this next spooky story came to us from Ryan, also in Maryland, and it's called The Abandoned Hospital. It was Halloween night and a group of friends sat around a campfire telling scary stories and daring each other to do the most daring things. They were eager to prove their bravery to one another. As the night wore on, the group's leader, Alex, suggested they explore the abandoned hospital on the outskirts of town. The hospital had been closed down for years and rumors of strange happenings had circulated for ages. The group agreed and they set off towards the hospital, feeling their heartbeats quicken with each step. The hospital was just as spooky as they had heard, with broken windows and peeling paint. As they entered the hospital, they heard strange noises, but they brushed them off as nothing. The adrenaline was pumping and they felt invincible. The group split up to explore the hospital. As time passed, they became increasingly uneasy. They heard more noises and saw strange shadows moving in the corners of their eyes. The air grew colder as they ventured further into the building. Suddenly, one of the members, Joey, let out a blood-curdling scream. The others ran towards the room where they had left him, but he was nowhere to be seen. They searched the hospital, calling his name, but there was no response. Panic set in, and they realized that they, too, were lost within the abandoned hospital. As they searched, they found strange markings on the walls, symbols that they didn't recognize. They heard voices whispering in their ears, but no one was there. They felt as though they were being watched. Days turned into weeks, and the friends were never found. The people of the town eventually gave up searching, and the hospital was left to decay in silence. Years went by, and people reported strange noises and shadows moving within the walls of the hospital. Some believed that the spirits of the friends still roamed the halls, lost and searching for a way out. To this day, no one enters the abandoned hospital out of fear that they too will meet the same fate as the group of friends who disappeared into the darkness. <laughs> this next story was sent in from Josh in Kentucky. It's called The Cabin in the Woods, A Tale of Terror. There was a cabin deep in the woods that no one ever went near. It was old and had been abandoned for years with no signs of life around it. But one night when a group of campers set out on a hike, they stumbled upon the cabin and decided to spend the night there. They ignited a fire to keep themselves warm and sat around it, sharing stories and roasting marshmallows. Suddenly they heard a rustling noise outside the door. At first, they assumed it was just some wild animals prowling around, but something seemed off. One of them went outside to check, but there was nothing there. They returned inside, and a few minutes later, the sound came back. This time, it was louder and sounded like something was trying to force its way inside the cabin. The campers searched around and realized that the door wasn't secure enough. They tried to barricade it with chairs and tables, but it wouldn't hold. The sound grew louder and more aggressive, causing the campers to huddle together in fear. They could hear a creature's growl outside, and it wasn't anything they recognized from the woods. One of the campers peered through the window and saw a shadowy figure moving about outside. Suddenly, it lunged towards the door and the barricade started breaking apart. The campers screamed as they tried to hold on, but it was no use. A massive paw burst through the door, sending splinters flying in all directions. The creatures forced its way inside the cabin, and they saw that it was a massive wolf-like creature covered in fur and sharp fangs protruding from its jaws. The campers tried to fight it off with anything they could, but the wolf creature was too strong and ferocious. One by one, it attacked them until they were all gone. The next morning, hikers found the abandoned cabin in disarray, 
with no sign of what happened to the campers who had ventured inside. Some locals said that the cabin was cursed and that the wolf creature had been hunting in those woods for centuries. Even after all these years, no one has dared to go near the cabin again for fear of what might be lurking in the shadows. <laughs> this next tale was sent in from Hannah in Texas called The Laboratory of Doom. In a small town nestled deep in the forest stood an abandoned hospital. It was said that the hospital had been closed down for years due to a deadly disease that had swept through the area. But locals whispered that there was more to the story than just a simple outbreak. One night, a group of adventurous teenagers decided to explore the abandoned hospital for themselves. As they stepped inside, they were immediately struck by the eerie silence that filled the air. The hospital was dark and murky with long hallways that seemed to go on forever. As they moved deeper into the hospital, they noticed that strange symbols had been carved into the walls. They didn't recognize the symbols, but they could feel a sense of dread growing with every step. Suddenly, they heard a door slam shut somewhere in the distance. They hesitated for a moment, but then decided to press on. As they crept through the hallway, they found themselves in a long, abandoned laboratory. There were test tubes strewn on the floor, and the equipment looked as if it had been abandoned in a hurry. Suddenly, a strange sound echoed through the room, like the hiss of steam on metal. The friends stiffened in fear, and then they saw it, a strange shadow moving through the gloom. They couldn't see any clear details, but it was as if something was moving in the air around them. The friends turned and tried to run, but all the doors were locked and they were trapped. What happened next? We may never know. The story ends there, with the friends trapped in an abandoned hospital with a deadly secret. Did they escape? Did they uncover the truth behind the symbols on the walls? Did they meet a fate as mysterious as the hospital itself? The answer remains a mystery. <laughs> and our last spooky story is sent in from James in Pennsylvania. And this is called The Cursed Candy of Halloween. It was Halloween night and the streets were filled with children dressed up in spooky costumes and eagerly going from house to house in search of candy. Young Peter was no exception as he had spent weeks preparing his costume and was excited to start trick-or-treating. As he walked down the dark street, he noticed that one house seemed to stand out from the others. It was an old creaky house with flickering lights and cobwebs all around. Peter's friends dared him to knock on the door and ask for candy, and he bravely accepted the challenge. As he knocked on the door, he heard a strange voice calling out from inside of the house. Who is it that disturbs my peace on this spooky night? It asked. Peter stuttered and sheepishly replied, Um, trick or treat? The door creaked open slowly, revealing an old woman with a stern expression on her face. She gave Peter a piece of candy and warned him to be careful of the dangers of the night before closing the door behind him. Feeling relieved, Peter continued down the street. It was only when he arrived back home that he noticed something strange. The piece of candy he had received was unlike any other he had ever seen. It was black and tasted sour with a strange aftertaste that lingered in his mouth. Suddenly, he started feeling dizzy and collapsed on the floor. When he woke up, he found himself in a dark, creepy dungeon with the old woman from the spooky house standing in front of him. It turned out that the candy he had eaten was cursed, and the old woman was a witch who had lured him into her lair. He managed to escape with a little bit of his courage and wits, but he never forgot that Halloween night. From that day forward, he made sure to double-check his candy supply before consuming it for fear of falling into a trap once again. And every year on Halloween, he warns all the little children in his neighborhood to be careful of the witches and their cursed candy. <laughs> That's all for today's special episode of Spooky Stories. We want to express our gratitude to all of you who joined us to listen to these spine-tingling tales. We couldn't have done it without the amazing kids who share their fantastic stories with us. Thank you for making this broadcast a truly unforgettable one. Until next time, dear listeners, stay spooky. See you later, alligator. Stay cool, little ghoul. <laughs> <laughs>